bees might put some people on edge, but to others though, they're a vital part of nature's ecosystem, pollina pollinating plants and well, a very good source of honey production, of course. Today is World Bee Day, celebrating and raising awareness of bees and those who work with them, like, we've well, already met him, uh, Alan Doran, head of the Native Bee Tech and Tech Facility at Monash Uni. A very good morning to you, Alan. Thanks, Nate. Thanks for having me. World Bee Day. Uh, yeah. what, what, what is it for? What's it about? Well, I guess it's the day we can celebrate these tiny little pollinators. Uh, some of them provide honey, but maybe your viewers would be interested to know that the majority don't. Um, there are about 20,000 species of bee worldwide, and mm -hmm. um, most of us know the honeybee. Which, of course. Yeah, which was introduced to Australia in 1820s, mm -hmm. uh, but we've got about 1,600, maybe as many as 2,000 species of native bee, uh, which by and large don't make honey, actually. Yeah, and often don't have stings. That's true. Well, right? Yeah, many of them, well, the majority of them are actually stingless. Uh, it wouldn't be productive if you're a solitary bee, and many of them are solitary bees, they don't live in the large colonies that honeybees live in, uh, to go around stinging everything that yeah. trod on you, uh, you want to get away as best you can without risking death. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, bees have been in the news a lot, of course, because of the varroa mite, which is, is so uh, just devastating to bees. How important is it that we look after our bees? Because uh, the native ones, I guess, like, can they fill some of the gaps from the introduced species? Well, yeah, there's a, there's a few really good points in there. So one, Varroa is probably going to be mostly a problem for the introduced European honeybees. Right. Uh, and our native bees have survived for millions of years before the arrival of the honeybees. Uh, so it is possible that when Varroa really hits hard and it's increasingly hitting, uh, the honeybee populations are going to suffer a, a major decline in the wild, especially. We're still managing many, many populations, of course, and we'll continue to do that because they're so valuable for our agriculture. Uh, but indeed, our native bees are great pollinators of our crops, and of course, they underpin Australia's native ecosystems. Mm. Now, I noticed uh, at Monash University, it's bee and tech. You're no biologist. That's right, right Nate. So, yeah, I'm a computer scientist, which is probably a little surprising for many mm. people that I'd be working with bees. Uh, so, we work with technology to better understand our insects, and we do that in a few different ways. Mm. So, one of them is improved monitoring. So we're using new technology, AI, computer vision and so on to, to monitor insects in the field and on our crops. We also use computer science to build simulations that run a little bit like a computer game. So you can imagine a game like Pac-Man, for instance, yeah. where there's ghosts running around. But in this game, the ghosts are the insects and there's no Pac-Man eating them. Uh, and we watch what these, these insects do as they move across crops or across wildflowers, and that way we can track their pollination behaviour. But more importantly than that, we can use it to make predictions about how they're going to behave under certain circumstances. Mm. So if we change the illumination in a greenhouse, for instance, we can see how the insects behave differently, and we can then make recommendations to our growers who are producing the fruit and vegetables yeah. uh, and seed crop about how they should rearrange their uh, infrastructure, basically, to improve pollination. Yeah, to meet the bees' needs. Yeah, basically, to help the, help the bees help us, but also to make sure that the bees are healthy and uh, we're looking after them, uh, and that applies for our native bees as well as our um, imported and introduced, managed uh, European. Yeah, uh, th there are a couple of things that my brain goes to straight away. Is AI helping you out here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, what, what we're trying to do is understand how insects behave, and to do that we build models that are like virtual bees if you like. And so they're powered by lots of little AIs, yeah. right? Uh, and those little virtual bees can see in a way that we, um, we build a model that parallels what we understand about bee vision. So when we're working with honeybees, for instance, they've got very different visual systems to humans. They, they can only see about 75 centimetres in front of them. Uh, their colour vision is different, so they see colours different to, to humans. For instance, they can see into the UV part of the spectrum, which we can't. So when we look at a flower and we think, oh, that's a beautiful and obvious flower, it's not necessarily the case that the insects see it the same way, and they certainly might not even see it as obvious. Depends on the background, for yeah. instance, and against... Similarly, flowers that are dull to us can be like, 
on Absolutely. fire visually. Yeah, and some some flowers that will look very similar to us, you know, we might say these two are almost indistinguishable. It'd be immediately obvious to a bee if it can see this UV patterns yeah. that are on the petals, uh, that those are different flowers, and that helps them make decisions. Mm. So that's why we need these little AIs, if you like, these little kind of models of individual bees um, to see what it is that the bee sees. And then we run simulations with thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of virtual bees. Yeah, yeah. nice. Uh, we've got bumblebees in, in Tasmania in Tas as well, right? That's right. They were introduced, mm. uh, it was thought, I think in the 1990s, probably by a tomato farmer. Uh, so tomatoes need buzz pollination, mm. uh, which is where a bee grabs hold of the flower, basically, and it oscillates the flower, and that releases oh the pollen. Honeybees can't do that. Some of our native bees can do that, uh, but some of our native bees are quite difficult to manage, whereas bumblebees are quite abundant once they get established. Big, uh, fat and slow, right? And yes, easy to spot. <laughs> exactly. And unfortunately, they pollinate weeds, uh, especially right. introduced weeds. So it's a bit of an issue. It would have been better, I think, had they not been introduced. Uh, We've got my favourite bees. Mm. Yeah, blue banded bees. And bees, I, yeah. I think... Yeah, many people might not have noticed them, um, but if you are sitting in your garden on a warm, sunny day, uh, especially watching purple flowers, they seem to like purple flowers, to our eyes, they look purple. Yeah. Um, you'll find these bees that are quite fast, quite loud, uh, and they've got brilliant blue stripes instead of yellow. And cool. when I first saw them as a computer scientist coming into this whole world of bees, I was amazed and I thought, how is it I never noticed mm. something so amazing? But our bees are diverse and, and really beautiful. Alan, thank you so much for coming in on Well Bee Day and telling us all about it. Thanks, Nate. Pleasure.